Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it is quite early uh, for me, um, or quite late, however you want to look at it, uh, since I haven't gone to sleep yet, but that is about to happen. Uh, however, I wanted to finish uh, writing um, a piece of custom code and try and get it working just the way that I wanted it to and, and kind of make it look nice uh, before doing this video. Um, it's just a short little tutorial, uh, but I think that this may be pretty useful to quite a few of you. Um, one of the questions that's come up to me quite a few times uh, is how to do um, more complex searching throughout your app. Uh, as I think most of us know, you can do simple searching using a very basic custom function. <clears throat> and actually, I think at this point, Flutterflow has introduced that uh, simple search uh, inside of, of Flutterflow, so you don't have to do a custom function. Um, but the problem with simple search is that you cannot search an entire collection uh, without first querying that entire collection to a user's device. Um, so let's say that you wanted to search uh, the user's collection and be able to uh, type in any, any user's name and it return a result for that user. If you use simple search, then you would have to download your entire user collection to the to the user's device for them to be able to search through those um, returned results. And if you have thousands of users, that can be a very costly query as well as a very time-consuming query, um, uh, since you would have to uh, just use a, a normal query without doing. Um, the, uh, uh, what is it, infinite scroll, or whatever it's called. Um, so, you know, that that's, uh, simple search is good for uh, small, small um, queries that, that you just need to search a very small amount of data. Um, the other thing about simple search is that, to my knowledge, unless uh, something has changed, uh, you can only apply the search to one uh, collection. You can't search across multiple collections. So there's limitations there. Now, of course, you could use... It's there somewhere. You could use Algolia, which is a um, complex search engine uh, API that Flutterflow has integrated, and so you could use that, but the issue is, is that you have to go sign up for an account with Algolia, you have to get it all configured, make it work right, and I'm pretty sure that Algolia uh, has a free tier, but does eventually start charging you um, to use, use their service, um, and I think that that limitation makes Al Algolia somewhat unattractive to a lot of uh, users, um, a lot of developers here on Flutterflow. So what I wanted to do then was I wanted to develop a custom code that essentially does what Algolia does without using Algolia. Uh, you can just do it directly from within your app. You don't have to employ any third-party APIs and you don't have to download the entire uh, collection to the user's device to be able to query the collection. And on top of that, you can query across multiple collections, um, anywhere from one, two, three collections all the way up to all of your collections. And you can return pretty much any, uh, well, you can return any data fields that you want to. Um, so. This could be particularly useful, um, well, for for a variety of reasons, quite frankly. Um, as an administrator, it could be very useful on the if you have an admin panel to go in and search a user's username and return all documents across all collections that are associated with that user. Um, so, just a lot of a lot of ways you could probably make use of this. 
So this particular custom code does use um, a couple of functions, actions, and a widget. So it's all encased in, in into one, one thing here. Uh, we have our search field and you can't see it here, um, but this is a list view uh, that will return um, uh, containers with information depending on what you, what you search for. Uh, if we jump over here into the code, <clears throat> just take a look at it real quick. This is what we're working with. Um, I just named it my widget. I could have named it pretty much anything, but it just left it that way. Uh, but going down through here, just kind of look at a couple of things. Um, uh, let's see. So right now I have it configured to search uh, two collections, a posts collection and a market collection. Um, and the uh, field that I'm searching in is the name field. Uh, so both of those collections have a field, a string field called name. Um, I could make it so that it can search across multiple fields, but right now I just have it set up to search one field. And what it does is it looks for whatever name I type in, in the posts and market collection collections and uh, any documents that share that name uh, that I type in will be returned in the query. Um, this is defining the widget. So uh, this is looking at uh, the container uh, and just some decoration, border radius, different, different colors going on here. Uh, this is the text field, the input field where you would type the search. Uh, so it's just defining the, the colors of the, the text, the size, the uh, weight, um, the font type, <clears throat> and all of those, those different things there. Um, I'm going to go down here a little bit. Uh, let's see. So this is the list view builder. Uh, that's what you can't see in the, in the uh, editor, but it is there. Um, so I can go down, go down through here. Um, just got some more colors assigned to stuff and everything like that. So anyway, so that, that is the code. It is, it is working. Um, I, I'm still just kind of modifying it a little bit to make it a little bit more attractive, but it is, uh, a functional code. And so I'll pull this over here and show you how it works real quick. Um, and just to kind of, uh, let me go back here real quick and go into my collections, my posts collection. You can see that I have a name field, email and description fields, uh, and the market I have name field, description, and email fields. They don't, the only thing that really matters is the name field because that's what it's searching in, but the return fields, I can have it return whatever I want. Um, and then if I pull this over and go into my posts, I'm going to be searching for this name. I'm going to be looking for Mark. Uh, so in posts, I have Mark, Mark at Yahoo, and then I have this description. Uh, and then in market, um, I have Mark, I have this description, and I have email. And as you can see, these data fields are not in the same order in the collections. That doesn't matter. You, they don't have to be you know, name, email, description, and both of them, they can be at different different points because um, the, the search algorithm knows how to parse these things and, and split them up. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and pull that back up here. All right, so you just uh, type in here, you can see it's my hint text. Now, this does not currently, and, and I may implement this, but it doesn't currently return the result as you type. You do have to tap this little icon button here to make it perform the search. Okay, and now I'm just going to search for it. All right, so you can see it returned the results. Um, this is coming from, that first one is... Uh, 
with the long description. It's coming from the posts collection. So the at Yahoo and then the second one at Gmail is coming from the market. So you can see that at, at Gmail. Um, also, something kind of important to note is that you can see that these are two different colors here. So it is possible to define different colors depending on what collection you're pulling from. Um, so there's there's a lot of customization you can do to this code to make it kind of do different things. Um, and again, I'm just showing a, a few uh, fields here, but I, I can definitely set it up to return um, a bunch of different fields if I want to. Um, so anyway, that that's uh, what I've got going on here. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, custom code uh, to give you the ability to really kind of expand your search capabilities um, across uh, multiple uh, collections. Um, as you can see, it, it works pretty well. Um, still ironing out some of the, some of the details on it. Um, but if you're interested in uh, using this particular code, definitely let me know. Um, I will make it available soon. Uh, and I'll, I'll add some notes to it uh, with some, some guidance on what you need to modify to make it work with your, um, your particular setup. Uh, if you would like for me to implement the modifications for you um, and add in extra text fields, change the colors and the, the font type and, you know, make it fit with your app um, and and work out of the box let me know and we'll we'll work something out on that um, but otherwise uh, if you want to take control of the code yourself and and play around with it you're welcome to um, okay so that that's it for tonight uh, I'm about to go get some sleep and then I'll get back at it by the way later later today um, part nine of the social media app tutorial is coming um, so that, that'll be available pretty soon. I, I know people have been asking about it. Um, and I've got something, I've got something in the works regarding re or related to that particular tutorial that I think uh, a lot of you will appreciate and uh, enjoy learning how to do. Um, so, all right, that's, uh, that's all for now. Um, take care.